<laughs> Did that scare you? I fucking hope so. Here's some other scary stuff. Ha! 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 So I realized the other day after someone had asked me what my favorite horror movie was that I have no idea. Just none. Like I guess I just never really put that much thought into it. But seeing as though it's Spooktober, I thought, you know, why, why not make a list of my personal favorite horror movies? <laughs> And I think a lot of people will be surprised with this list. I think a lot of people will hate a lot of the movies that I'm going to put on here. So if you don't see one on here that's your personal favorite, make sure to leave that in the comments down below and I'll probably check those out. And then uh, also I'll leave in the description down below a more extended version of this list so you guys can see kind of all of the movies uh, in their entirety. So we'll start off with number 10, The Human Center. I'm just kidding. That's, that's a joke. <laughs> Please don't unsub. That was, that was comedy, okay? You know what's f***ing comedy is how bad that movie is. Personally, a uh, huge fan of the second one where he masturbates with sandpaper. You know, hashtag relatable right there. Nothing gets me off more than a scratchy piece of paper. Am I right, fellas? <clears throat> Again, just, uh, just, just a joke. Oh my god. I can't even say this because I know people are gonna give me sh** for it. Okay, starting off, number 10. Uh, this one is already gonna get people really mad. 28 weeks later. That's right, 28 weeks, not 28 days. I wish I was joking with this one, honestly. Uh, I love 28 Days Later. I think it's a fantastic movie. I just, I think the vibe, really, of 28 Weeks Later just kind of scared me more, and that's what this whole list was really about for me, was movies that I watch because they scared me. 28 Weeks Later, for some reason, is much more terrifying to me. It opens, the main characters are in this farm, everything seems f***ing cool until- <laughs> <laughs> zombie bursts through the f***ing door and then it's just a goddamn sh show from then on out ah, ah. And then the one dude f***ing abandons his wife so much shit happens in the first like five f***ing minutes of this movie And it's a perfect setup for the rest of the movie <laughs> Sorry. Jeremy Renner's in it. I mean, like that. Not that that's like a selling point, but I was I was rewatching it recently, and I was like, why the f is Jeremy? Why is Hawkeye? In this? Hawkeye, what are you doing here, bro? This one is one that really will upset people because I think for a lot of people, 28 weeks was underwhelming and kind of shitty and ruined what was a perfect universe that was set up in 28 days later. But I, I disagree. I think it was really scary and really well made. Number nine, The Hills Have Eyes. Uh, and this one is the, what, 2006 remake of The Hills Have Eyes? So not the original Hills Have Eyes. If you must know, I haven't seen the original Hills Have Eyes, but the 2006 remake of The Hills Have Eyes, actually, I really like. I know that for a lot of people, it's kind of like uh, gore porn, if you want to call it. Not, not Al Gore, not him, like just gore. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a lot of stabby stab weird mutated people trying to rip people. I can't say that on YouTube uh, Trying to uh, forcefully tickle people. It's just non-stop like grossness happening in the movie But that's that's kind of why I like it The whole point of the movie is to set up this world of really gross Animalistic barbarian type people that have their own kind of community and their own way of surviving and one of the ways that they survive is by eating people that they find along the road. <laughs> and I think that's just so scary, dog. Like, fuck. The entire movie is almost a character study of the, the, the main group of people. While people along the way die, you see kind of this transformation of the main character, who in the beginning is kind of whipped by the older dad guy. Hey, Brukowski, give the cell phone a rest. <laughs> Who ends up dying, spoiler alert, sorry. And then he just comes back because he's trying to save his fucking baby, right? Like, he comes later and he's like, oh, hell no, you mutated sack of shit. He comes in, he karate chops some boys. So I, I didn't want to lift my leg because I'm in my boxers. But he comes in, he karate chops some fuckers. He takes an axe to a bitch's head. Weird guy singing the national anthem for some reason. It's a real weird movie. It's action-packed. It's terrifying. It's just... <clears throat> you know, it's duh. So yes, number nine, The Hills Have Eyes. I know, weird, weird movie. Okay, <laughs> so number eight, this is this is gonna be a weird one and you guys are gonna give me shit for it. I think I've said that about all three of the movies that I've been talking about. Number eight uh, is Jurassic Park, which yes, guys, I am aware Jurassic Park is not a horror movie. But it is. Jurassic Park is a terrifying f***ing movie. And anyone who wants to tell me that it's not can goddamn fight me. Have you seen the velociraptors stalking these children? Or that weird spitty creature going after the fat guy? 
the reason that I watch Jurassic Park is to be scared. I categorized it as a horror movie in my eyes, amongst other things, because it scares the f***ing daylights out of me. If there were daylights in me, they'd be gone. They'd be out of here. So say what you will, you guys can roast me in the comments for having Jurassic Park on this list, but I was terrified to my core watching this movie. It's one of those movies that you rewatch and rewatch, and it still scares you. Uh, next on the list, number seven, is Pandorum. And you're probably sitting there thinking, Tester, I've never heard of that movie. What the sh are you talking about? For some reason, and this is like an anomaly in and of itself, no one has heard of the movie Pandorum, and it is a goddamn crime. I swear to God, I've shown like at least 10 people that movie, and they all loved it, but for some reason had never heard of it prior to me showing them the movie. But Pandorum is so scary. <laughs> it's one of those stories where you go into it, it's slow, it's slow to happen, these dudes are waking up, you're kind of thinking like, when is this movie gonna get good? Like you're 20 minutes in, like dude, checking the clock, Why no one wears a watch anymore. You know, you're just like, when am I gonna see some shit, man? And man, do you see some shit without giving too much away. Space Orcs. <laughs> Space Orcs. And this is one of those movies that really blows your fucking mind. There are so many kind of plot twists that happen that just you do not expect at all. It grabs you by your nipple hair and yanks you into this fucking awesome dimension of terrifying bullshit. Did I mention space orcs? Okay, space orcs, guys. Fuck. Again, this is one of those movies that's kind of a character study of trying to simply survive on a spaceship that has been lost in space. It is a fantastic movie. I cannot recommend it enough. If you haven't seen Pandora, I'm like, holy shit. Do yourself a favor and watch it. And number six is Aliens, which similarly to Pandorum is a movie that is primarily set in space. Kind of starts slow as well, but it is the sequel to the movie Alien, which came out I think in 79. So while I think the first one was directed by Ridley Scott, the second one is directed by the magnificent James Cameron, who is just a hunk of Look at this. Whoa. Oh, baby. But the reason I included Aliens on here is while it can be looked at like an action movie, I think there are a lot of action elements in it. I watched this movie because it scares the f out of me. Ah. I think that this one was so much more well crafted in kind of the universe of the aliens. You know, you're you're actually seeing their queen. You're fighting their queen with a goddamn mech suit. What? That's so sick, dude. <laughs> uh, I sound like a 12 year old trying to make a review. Dude, it's f***ing sick, bro. Let me try to make a concise thought about why Aliens is a good movie. <laughs> so the movie stars Sigourney Weaver, who has the coolest goddamn name of all time. I mean, Jesus Christ. So Sigourney Weaver and your awesome curly hair. She woke up from a cryostasis. Sound familiar to Pandorum? Yeah. Copycat. I know. So Sigourney over here wakes up uh, from cryo sleep, she's been drifting in space for the last 70 fucking years. I think it's 70 years. That sounds right. Her daughter that she had when she was younger is already dead. She's real sad. <laughs> That's just where I end the review. She's real sad. But Sigourney, but <laughs> I like how I call her Sigourney, not Ripley. All right, Ripley, the main character played by Sigourney Weaver, is like, yo, I was uh, attacked by an alien in the last movie. Didn't you see that? It was pretty good. We jettisoned that fucking alien out of the ship, but there were so many more eggs and stuff left on the planet. What happened to those? And the company that found Ripley is like, yo, it's fine. We got it covered. There's people living there. It's a great time. And Sigourney's like, no, no, no. Sorry. Ripley's like, uh, uh, bitch. I'm gonna check this stuff out because I'm pretty sure y'all are gonna die. And what do you think happens? That's right. So her and and this weirdo uh, end up going down to the planet, and a massive military strike ends up happening. That Sigourney. Ripley, god damn it, is a part of and helps uh, take down the aliens. This movie, in my opinion, is a perfect movie. I think I gave it a 10. I did, I gave it a 10. It does come with its faults. There's a little girl in the movie named Newt that just is so fucking annoying. I, oh god. If you want to count the amount of times that Newt during the movie goes, Ripley! Newt! Ripley! 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 It's super fucking annoying, but this also was the movie that had the amazing late Bill Paxton uh, say, Game, game over, man! Yeah. It's game, game over! So it's an amazing movie. Aliens, uh, couldn't recommend this one more. Number five, The Lost Boys. So this one I really feel like needs no introduction. So many people have like kind of a cult following towards The Lost Boys now. So check it out. Mikey. I actually watched this movie when I was like really little. I want to say I was like probably five or six. Not a good time to watch this movie, by the way. Amongst the Thriller music video, this was like number two on the things that made three-year-old Destry shit his pants. But The Lost Boys, if you haven't seen it, is this movie about a vampire kind of coven 
led by, uh, uh, not, I almost said Keith Richards, that's not right, what is his name? Kiefer Sutherland, yes, that guy, uh, who's just looking f***ing hot, by the way. Whoops! Ah, 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 ah. And he leads a vampire coven, or does he? Spoiler! Who wants to invite these two new people who are main characters, Sam and Michael, into his vampire coven. So Michael, who's, who's a big, he's a big dum-dum, he is easily seduced by this, this hot girl, uh, Star, who is part of the coven. He ends up eating some worms and maggots and stuff just to kind of prove himself and jumping off bridges. Which, guys, if there's someone out there who's telling you to jump off a bridge, don't do it, okay? Even if it's me, don't do it, okay? Okay? I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious right now. So once Michael joins the coven, it's up to Sam and his ragtag group of badasses to go and kill the entire vampire coven and sh uh, gets real twisty. Also, there's this muscly guy playing the saxophone. He's, he's, he's not a man character. But he is in my heart. So I think the thing that stands out about The Lost Boys for me personally is that the soundtrack is just so heckin' good. You got the People Are Strange When You're a Stranger song. You got the main Lost Boys theme song. You got the saxophone man muscly shirt off guy. Not to mention all the 80s hits that are in the movie. It's so good, dude. So that said, The Lost Boys, so good. Number four, Seven. What's in the box? So Seven is a movie that came out in 1995, I knew that, and stars Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, God himself, of course, uh, as they are two detectives trying to figure out a slew of serial killings that happened in their city. What really sets apart this movie from other kind of serial killer uh, dramatizations or documentaries is that the killings themselves are just so fucking gruesome and like there's so many scenes in this that are like perfectly crafted that just make your spine just feel like liquid like you're just you're watching this movie you're just uncomfy you know you're like oh god oh. if you don't make that sound at least once during watching this you're probably dead inside there are no shortages of things that i can praise about this movie it is so beautifully written the characters are fantastic even the world kind of setup that that they do is so dark and gothic and really film noir perfectly accents this movie to make it one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, up next is The Silence of the Lambs, which is a movie that was made in 1991 and was about a FBI agent who has to enlist the help of a serial killer by the name of Hannibal Lecter to catch another serial killer still wanted by police called Buffalo Bill. Who, if you're anyone but a goddamn stink-ass brain, you probably know this movie because there's so many meme references that came from this movie, from the It puts the lotion in the basket! Or the Put your me, I me, I me so hard. Or who could forget? I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice skin. I think the first time I watched it was probably when I was 18, so I was kind of late to watching it since it came out in 1991. The year that I was born, bitch! High five! Oh, here's some other stuff that came out this year. Oh! Those are all terrible things. This movie was so revolutionary for the time. It won five f***ing Oscars for being so good. Uh, if you haven't seen it, what I can say without giving too much away is that this movie will just blow your mind all over the map. If you have a map, just like put it away, you know, like, cause you don't want brains on it. I mean, this is really, again, isn't like a horror movie. You're not gonna watch this for some paranormal bullshit. Ah. It's, it's, it's all about like real life serial killer stuff. And if you haven't caught on by now, I think real life kind of scary stuff scares me more than the paranormal. Uh, that's just kind of been something that's I've always, I've always noticed about myself. I am much more terrified of a guy with a knife coming in my apartment and trying to stab me, even though I have swords in every room and I could probably defend myself a little bit, then just like a demon who's just trying to like f with me a little bit, like that doesn't really scare me all that much. If a demon was trying to f with me, I'm pretty sure he would have done it already. Like, I'm open for business, dog. Oh god, I shouldn't have said that. So in that regard, yes, uh, Silence of the Lambs, not only one of my favorite horror movies of all time, but definitely in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Number two is Silent Hill. So this is a uh, movie that was based off of a video game that was made by Konami by a little tiny team called the Silent Silent Team? <laughs> team Silence, that's what it is. Silent Team. Created by Silent Library. <laughs> I will be the first to admit that most video game adaptations into movies are total shit. Like, let's just look at the long list 
of terrible video game movies. We got Mario Brothers, which I still watch. I, I will say, uh, guilty pleasure of mine is watching Mario Brothers. Doom! Tomb Raider! I'll take two. Wake me up! Now that's edgy as I can't wake up! The list goes on and on and on, but I really feel like the best video game adaptation movie and probably just one of the best movies ever is Silent Hill. So the movie is about a mom who is trying to save her daughter who got lost in a place called Silent Hill after the daughter kept saying the word Silent Hill during sleepwalking episodes. <laughs> The mom is like, what the dickens is that? So the mom's like, all right, well, you know what? Let's go check out Silent Hill. Here it is on the map. Let's just dr let's drive over there. And so as they're driving, they get in this accident. When she wakes up, her daughter's gone, missing. She's trying to find the daughter and discovers this old, creepy town called Silent Hill. So as she tries to venture into the town to try to save her daughter, she realizes that it is not quite what it seems. As when the night rolls around, this creepy-ass alarm plays and she realizes that the entire world transforms in front of her and becomes a darkness realm where there's terrifying monsters that come out. Among the monsters, we have, of course, Pyramid Head. We got those real creepy ass bugs. We got like the backwards janitor guy who's just like scooting along like this. The kind of hot nurses that I don't know if I want to touch or not. But the mom is soon thereafter met by a cult who is the main reason that any of this shit is happening in this town. And a bunch of yucky events follow, including the burning to death of the character Andrea from The Walking Dead. Another thing that I think we can all appreciate about this movie is that Sean Bean is in it. And I'll have you know, he doesn't die in it. Good job, man. You did it. I think the, the world is so beautifully crafted. It really shows kind of the depravity of cult-like behavior very well. And aside from being one of my personal favorite uh, horror movies of all time, is definitely the best video game adaptation movie of all time. And finally, number one is Mandy. Oh man, what? can I say about this movie? So to any of you guys who have actually seen this movie, you're probably thinking, Destry, Mandy isn't a horror movie. And to that, I would probably agree. It's not supposed to be a horror movie. There are a lot of action elements in it. There are a lot of psychological fuckery that happens within this movie, but that is exactly the reason it deserves to be on this list. It is a mind fuck. I have seen 1600 movies in my lifetime, and I have never seen a movie like this. And before we keep going with why Mandy is such an amazing movie uh, to me personally, I do want to address that yes, Nicolas Cage is the main character of this movie. Do you know how hard it was for me to say that my favorite horror movie of all time has Nicolas Cage as a main guy? Rewind to like 10 years ago when I was making fun of Nicolas Cage for making the same stupid face in every movie. I'm Nicolas Cage, my face always looks like this. And then fast forward to now, when for some reason my favorite horror movie stars Nicolas Cage. Oh man, trust me, it was very hard to come to this realization. I think the reason I don't like him in a lot of things is just he's very over the top, right? Like you don't know if like he's a good actor or a bad actor or what. You're just like kind of watching him like freak out in a lot of movies. Not the beast! I will say that there are things in this movie where you'll watch it and you won't know whether to laugh or cry with him as he's going through this emotional anguish. But, you know, I really feel like Nicolas Cage just gave this incredibly raw performance. Not once did I like feel like he wasn't a real person. He is so real in this movie that you forget any kind of prejudice that you have about Nicolas Cage and you just enjoy the movie. This is so weird defending Nicolas Cage. I don't like it. And how in the fuck this has a 6.6 .6 on IMDb, I won't, I will never know. I don't know what it has on Rotten Tomato, but this movie is like incredibly good. Mucho bello. I don't I don't know Italian. The sad thing about this movie is that I feel like if I say anything about it, it really will be giving away too much about it. But what I can say is that it uh, centers around Nicolas Cage and his wife, Mandy, who are a couple in the woods, kind of just enjoying their life, and then are abruptly interrupted by an LSD-making cult, where the cult then contacts LSD-addicted gothic biker gangs. <laughs> I can't, okay. Because the cult wants Mandy to be a part 
uh, of his little his little gang. Oh, it's so nice. No, it's not. It's not nice. Okay. Pretty much as soon as you put this movie on. You don't know what you're watching. You really don't know what you're watching. You're expecting one thing, and then another thing happens. You're expecting an action movie, and then another thing happens. You're expecting a horror, thriller, weird thing, and then more psychologically disturbing shit than you've ever seen happens. So if you're not sold on watching Mandy, what more I can say about it is like, this movie is the closest I will ever feel to doing drugs. I don't personally like to puff the marijuanas or, or bring my high school uh, science teacher in my Winnebago to make little b blue crystals. So to watch this movie just sober was like a fucking acid trip. Watching this movie on drugs, I don't even want to know, dude. Like you will be traumatized for life if you do that. One last thing about this movie, Chainsaw Duel. I mean, I'm sold. But that's it guys, uh, that is all of my top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. Uh, again, if there was something on here that you didn't see, uh, make sure to check out the list, it might be on there. And also leave in the comments down below one of your favorite horror movies. I will be constantly checking this just to kind of like see your guys' input on stuff. And uh, also if you like this video, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, one really great way to support me is if you go over to patreon.com, become a patron, uh, it really helps me out. And of course with the spicy, spicy merch you can check out at deskmerch.com. This was the first of sort of an unscripted kind of review series that I want to start soon where I just take something that I, I, I think I'm you know fairly passionate about and just go at it and just have just have fun with it. So if you guys like this it would really mean a lot. Like this video, tell me what you think and uh, yeah. That's it guys. Have a fantastic spooktober. I love you all. Stay spooky y'all and fair winds.